How's it going, Reef Keepers? Hope everybody's having a good weekend. I recently made a change on the system, and I figured, hey, you know, might as well make a video on it. Trying to get back into the swing of turning some videos out when I have the opportunity. Um, I know it's been a big dead period this summer, so, you know, bear with me. It'll, things will pick back up. I'm trying. But uh, anyhow, the change that I made was that instead of having a little 5-watt wave maker attached to my backup battery, I now have my Neptune Core 15 return pump attached to my backup battery, which is fantastic. I'm, I'm much happier with that. Um, at the bare minimum, you want a wave maker moving the water in the display. That is a bare minimum. Um, the best case scenario is that you have a return pump hooked up so that the water down here does not stagnate and change in chemistry and have, you know, weird biological processes go on while it is stagnant, while you're waiting for power to come back on. Because if it sits there too long and then power is reactivated and it comes out and squirts out into the tank, that water is going to then hit corals that are already in a shock situation. And that upheaval in chemistry that's going on there is probably not the best thing, right? You don't want that water sitting down in your sump if you can help it, okay? Not the worst case scenario in the world, but best case scenario is you've got a return pump that's going to keep all the water in your system churning. So uh, that's that was my goal going into this. However, and this is the part where like, you know, stick with me. I don't want to lose you, but it really applies to people who have a Neptune Core 15 or Core 20 return pump. Um, the core 15 of these two pumps, the core 20 is stronger. The core 15 is kind of unique because it is powered and has data communication go through what's called a Neptune one link cable. So the one link cable, you know, there's only one port on the bottom of a driver for a, or not a driver, a control box. I guess it is a driver too, but the control box driver for a core 15 and that one port that goes into it that you can plug anything into is a one link cable. You're intended to get all your power and your data connection through that singular cable, which in theory is cool. However, when you go to hook it up to a backup battery, it kind of muddies the waters, right? So there's two routes you can take. Route one is that you program your and I'm kind of talking out of my rear end a little bit here, but I spoke to Z-Burns Reefing. Great channel, by the way. You guys should check it out. Way more polished than what I do. On your EB-832, he said that, if I'm recalling correctly, he can correct me if I'm wrong, he basically pro plugged his EB-832 into his backup battery. And from there, he entered programming to shut, to in the case of a power outage, shut down every single one of the uh, outlets on it, but continue powering the one link cable that comes out of it and connects to the driver or control box of his uh, Core 15. That's a much more cost effective way to go about this than what I did. <laughs> so here's what I did. Because that whole process was a little, I mean, it's probably easier than I'm making it out to be, but it was a little bit more on the daunting side. What I did was I simply bought a new control box, right? So this is the old control box. You can see on the bottom, there's that one single port that you can plug anything into, the one link cable. And what I did was I bought a Core 20 control box. So it also works with the core 15 which is pretty nice so the other nice thing about it is that it has a dedicated power supply so i could take that dedicated power supply and plug it into my backup battery so that now that backup battery can actually power the core 15 through a core 20 control box right which is pretty sweet um however for my liking and this is a little tease for future videos that i'm going to be putting out for my liking, I want more than just a few hours of backup battery power, right? And while the EcoFlow River 2 base unit is phenomenal and would have powered that little um, that little 5 watt Tunes pump or Tunes wave maker that I had behind the control box over here for quite a while, 
I really was like, I should probably have more longevity out of my, my, you know, backup battery situation. And I run that core 15 at about 25% intensity. It's got like a 26, 27 watt draw. That's a, that's going to basically really cut down on what the base unit of the EcoFlow River 2 line is going to be able to do. So I did make an upgrade, right? <laughs> so this is my EcoFlow River 2 Max. It's the next, the next tier up in the lineup. And as you can see, like right now, I'm actively testing it to see how long from 100% all the way down to zero, how long exactly is a 27 watt draw from a Neptune Core 15? How, you know, how long can we go? So I've got, I'm showing 10 hours left uh, at 81% capacity since I unplugged the EcoFlow River 2 Max. So I love the unit. It's really not that much bigger than the base unit. Um, it really doesn't look bad whatsoever. Uh, in fact, my wife didn't even notice that it was different. Uh, I've got the EcoFlow River 2 Max now plugged into my daughter's uh, nano tank, her little 25 gallon, and it'll run that thing for like a day um, from what I've got hooked up to it. So pretty good situation all around. One thing I will mention, you're gonna want to, so there's a weird situation when you plug, you know, when you, when you put on a core 20 control box and hook it up to a core 15, it's, they're not really made for each other. And so like, there is this odd situation that happens where like, if you lose, like, let's say the river two max dies. Okay. This control box will not just turn off. It will cease pushing power through to the core 15, right? But if there is power entering the um, EB-832 that these cords all hook back to the data lines, the data line itself is gonna power this box a little bit. And it's enough that the box itself does not deactivate. So, the system doesn't read that the return pump is off. It reads that it is in error, volt error to be exact. So what you're going to want to do is if you have a backup pump, like I do a backup return pump, and you want it to activate when the core 15 ceases, what you're going to want to do is along with your, you know, if core 15 off, then, you know, backup pump on coding, you're going to want to also code, uh, if, error if there's a core 15 error then backup pump on so you're definitely going to want to add that language to your backup return pump and any other equipment that you want to react to there being an error or an off situation where essentially the core 15 is no longer pushing water right but be aware of the weird volt error situation that the apex reads don't get caught off guard. I'm glad that I ran this thing through some testing and figured that out. Um, and I'll probably delve into more of that in the actual EcoFlow uh, River 2 Max series of videos that I put out and just, you know, put some asides in there for Core 15 uh, owners because that is, uh, that was a strange quirk that I ran into. But all right, guys, um, hope you enjoy looking at the tank. The, uh, the Duncans are waking back up. I don't know what their drama was. Everything else is happy. Um, last couple days, Duncans have been, you know, kind of, kind of withdrawn a little bit, kind of strange. I tested all my levels, everything, all parameters are checking out. Uh, salinity's checking out just weird. So, um, yeah, uh, new things on the horizon, new things in the works, and I'll be back with another one before long. Have a good one, everybody.